Hi Floss Tube, welcome to my channel. I'm Mary Am, also known as Crafty Yams on Instagram, Crafty Yams on YouTube obviously, and I've also started up a gum road. So welcome to 2023. I thought I'd start the year with a finish parade. So I've seen a um, number of other Floss Tubers doing a summary of their finished pieces for 2022. So I haven't actually counted how many finishes I've had for 20, uh, 22. Um, I feel like it's more than I think it is uh, because looking around my house, there's a lot of little pieces on the walls that I didn't, don't really pay that much attention to, uh, but ones that I have finished this year. So if I had to guess, I'd say there was about 20 that I've done this year. Um, yes but we will find out today um so if you're new to the channel this is where i talk about cross stitch mostly sometimes about my pets and also sometimes about my plants i've got a lot of house plants not as many as i used to um so i did cut them back a bit but i still have about a hundred in the house i haven't counted them properly um but i was thinking of doing another house plant tour video more focusing on the really hardy houseplants that survive if you neglect them, since that's what I've been doing, neglecting them. Um, yeah, but for today, I'll show you the finishes. Um, so some of them I will take the, well, I'll show you where I've displayed them in, in my house. So I'll have to take the camera downstairs. Um, so you'll be seeing the displayed fully finished objects or DFFO. Um, and others are in my room so I guess I'll start with the finishes that I've already got in here I don't know why I looked outside there are there are no cross stitch pieces outside though I would like to put some outside just because there's no room inside um, obviously they'd be exposed to the elements and probably would not last long but um, there are some patterns that I really would love to have in my garden so there's one that's um, Never mind the weeds, uh, they're feeding the bees. So I'm thinking of stitching that one and somehow putting it in a weatherproof location outside. But um, yeah, outdoors cross stitch displays are not a thing. Um, I'll see how that, that project goes. Um, yeah, but anyway, on to the finishes. So I might go through the Barbara Anna finishes that I have so there's a few Barbara Annas I've done this year more than I was expecting this one's got dust on it so this is um, one of the dreaming girls mystery stitch alongs and this was floral dreams this was the first Barbara Anna is that true first yeah this is the first Barbara Anna I actually stitched um, and if you haven't stitched a Barbara Anna before they're very unique um, in that um, they, she has a very particular style as a designer. You can see a pattern from her and know straight away that this is her work. Um, she uses really good um, color schemes that work really well together. Um, yeah, and if you do a few of her pieces and put it on a wall, it looks very unified. Uh, so that's that one. I used some... No, no, I didn't. So she had called for some Krynik thread or some really... Um, it was some rayon thread I think that was difficult to work with so I unpicked that and just put in a normal DMC one of the variegated ones um, yeah so that's that one I finished that early in the year last year I'll just grab my other Barbara Anna um, gosh speaking of houseplants I do want to talk to you about this particular houseplant maybe at the end of the video but that's um yeah one of my favorites but I have a love-hate relationship with this so this is a Monstera Thai constellation it's one of the like rare it house plants of a few years ago um I'll tell you about that at the end so this is my latest Barbara Anna that I finished this is uh winged dreams also a mystery stitch along um yeah, and again, this was really great. She did not disappoint. 
Um, I like the moon motifs. She had some variegated threads in this and um, she doesn't normally stitch with variegated threads but that it ended up having a nice effect. Um, yeah and I like the little, little touches with the Krynik. Uh, I ended up using gold instead of silver by accident but it ended up looking okay. And um, so this one's on a 32 count linen. I think I had done this on a 28 count, did I? No, oh, they're different linens, so they look slightly different scales of pictures. Anyway, I actually have another Barbara Anna in this room. One okay, second. So this is uh, the second Barbara Anna I did. This is Woodland Dreams. Um, I really like the autumnal color scheme in this one. Um, yeah, and the little mushrooms and autumn leaves were really cute. I managed to find this like perfect frame for this. It's, um, I can't remember where I got it from. Oh, I think it was one of, it was called Ronnie's. It's like this discount warehouse. Um, so it's really lightweight, so you don't have to worry about it falling off the wall. Um, and I just kind of wrapped it around and stuck it with sticky tape so nothing too fancy. Um, yeah, so that was finish number three for those who are counting. Um, so this is one that I've finished but haven't actually found a home for. This is... Um, this is by Stitchy Princess Black, who's a Ukrainian cross-stitch designer. I think this was called Underwater World. And um, it was one of the first things I actually cross-stitched. And I picked this dark navy linen without really knowing the perils of stitching on dark linen. So I find it quite, I found it like not that enjoyable to stitch because I was like, straining my eyes the whole time. But since doing this, I've realized you can have a lot more fun stitching if you just don't use navy or black. Um, but I was really happy with the end result. Um, I like how the turquoise blues popped on this fabric. Uh, yeah, and I just can't seem to find a place to put this. You know, I have this difficulty where, like I've seen people with cross stitch walls where they put their pieces together, but say if I put this next to this, it just, doesn't really match like it doesn't go together the colors the style so I've got places for the Barbara Annas but for this design style I haven't I'm still not sure what wall to put it on so there's one more oh no there's two more finishes in this room so this is finish number five of 2022 and this is um, one that I designed so this is called under the spreading pomegranate tree um, and this is meant to be a pomegranate tree but some pomegranates on the ground and some lilies so I stitched this one recently for um, uh, so I st started stitching protest uh, sorry stitching protest stitching designs um, relating to the protest and revolution movement in Iran if you want to know more about that have a look at my previous video um, but I designed a series of three cross-stitch pieces that have a theme to do with Persia or to do with the protests. Um, and these patterns are available for free. So if you look at my Gumroad, you'll find them. I do encourage you to donate though, and the donations um, will be going to two different charities for Iran, Iran Human Rights and United for Iran. Both of those charities work to spread awareness about the human rights breaches happening there. So I had a lot of fun designing this. Um, I've got this one on 28 count cashel linen, which is my favorite type of linen to stitch on. And these are just DMC threads. Um, yeah, so this one didn't take too long to finish. Still not sure about how I finished it. Um, I got these fat quarters of various different fabrics. I'm just trying to use them for something so I thought this kind of matched but not really so I might take it out put it somewhere else so that's that one and I will get some more finishes okay so I will to break it up a bit I'll show you 
a finish that I haven't uh, finished properly yet or framed yet. So this one's called um, Kitty Kitty by The Primitive Hair. And this was part of um, this early stitches club, which she had last year. So that was where you paid, I think it was $80. And then for the year you got four or five of her patterns, exclusive patterns she released. And as well as that, she sent out some a sample of linen she had hand dyed, as well as a floss ring. Um, so this was my favorite pattern that she released in that year. Um, and I'm just realizing I haven't actually finished this. I lied. I've somehow forgotten to do this part. Almost finished. So this is an almost finish of 2022. Um, yeah, and she had written a bit about cheetahs and how they used to be kept as pets in the 1800s. And I did not know that. And it's just a, it's just such a crazy thing to think about. How can someone keep a wild animal as a pet? It's a bit scary. Um, but yeah, I like how she mapped this cheetah. It's kind of a semi-realistic style of cross stitch. Um, yeah, so I've just got to decide how to finish this. I'll probably put it in a frame. Uh, my daughter really likes cheetahs, so I might just put it in her room. Okay, so this is a finish that I did that isn't framed, isn't in a frame. Um, so this is a project bag that I sewed. Um, and this is from the Al Forest Embroidery House Plants Stitch Along. So I started doing this and then realized I had not um, cut a big enough piece of linen. And then I had other projects I was working on. This one kind of fell to the side. But I had stitched this one geranium um, for the month. And I thought it would be a waste if I didn't put it on something. So I made this project bag, um, which is handy. I was meaning to make more. Oh, and I lined it as well. But I uh, haven't got around to it. Oh, and there's a little bonus finish in here. So I also made this this year. So this is a scissor fob and it's from Blackbird Design. So it's in their August autumn book. I think I might even have it here. Uh, what's it called? The Winds of Autumn? Autumn? Hmm, maybe I don't have it here. I'm pretty sure this is from The Winds of Autumn, which is one of their books where they've just got a you know, 15 or 20 different cross stitch designs. And this was one of the smalls. Um, and I'd used some hand dyed 32 count linen that I had I also used. I didn't use their called for floss. I just had some weeks dye work floss and I tried to finish it using this raw silk. Um, I think it turned out okay. The, the silk is very fray, frayish. Is that a word? So whenever I use these scissors, there's like a pile of orange threads. But other than that, it's, yeah, it was fine. I'm just wondering if I have anything else in here. Oh, as a bonus, I guess I'll show you this. So this wasn't uh, really a whip parade. I was going to do another whip parade video later. But this is um, one of the Nora, Nora Corbett's I've been working on. This is Witching Hour. Um, Kitschy Whips has a really good, um, really good, I can't really form my sentences properly today. She's got a, uh, she's working on this too. She may have finished it now, but she's altered the pattern. So this is what it's meant to look like when it's finished, but she's actually added, uh, combined it with another Nora Corbett pattern, added another witch here, which is a really cool idea. Um, I'll just leave mine as is since it's taking me ages to even do one witch but so that's that and oh yeah I've got a couple more here so this one um, was from the frosted pumpkin stitchery um, I think it was called legendary friends if I'm not mistaken and I made this one for my daughter but she decided she didn't like it it's a bit random and I would think she might like unicorns and princesses, but she's like, no, I don't, I don't want that on my wall. <laughs> okay, so I put it elsewhere, put it downstairs. Um, yeah, this was a really cute pattern. 
didn't take too long to stitch. Um, I actually used some glow in the dark DMC, but uh, yeah, I'm quite disappointed with it. It's not really, it doesn't glow in the dark at all. Um, yeah, but other than that, it was good, good to stitch. And I'm really happy with the frame. You know how sometimes you just happen to find the perfect frame for your piece? I'm like, I feel like that happened with this one. Ah, so this is one of my favorites from 2022. This is the Gnomeville Stitch Along by Little Dove Designs. And I think it might be the first and only Stitch Along that I've actually finished. I've, I've got other ones in the works, but I uh, have not finished the other ones. But this one I was pretty good with. I kept up to date with it. And yeah, I'm happy with the end result. I switched out some of the called for threads. Oh, actually all of them. Yeah, I was trying to use up my stash. So these are all approximations and some are just substitutions too. I used a variegated thread for the snail and for the writing. Um, yeah, really like the ladybug. So I used this 28 count cashew linen. Um, it was a bit hard to get straight in the frame. I tend to get super excited when I finish a piece and then I just rush to like put it in a frame so I can hang it up but then they're often left like wonky and I stare at them later and it annoys me so this one I had to unframe and reframe a few times to get it okay, looking okay still a bit off center but good enough um yeah so I hope she comes out little dove designs comes out with some other stitch along this year I haven't heard anything um Yes, so how many is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight so far. So maybe my estimate of 20 is wrong, but I'll keep going. Okay, so this is another um, pattern that I designed in solidarity with the Iran protest. So this is called uh, Marg Bar Dictator, which is what the writing says here, which means um, death to the dictator. And this is based on um, the Shir and Khorshid, which means lion and sun, which are symbols from um, ancient Persia, from the Zoroastrian era. And this pattern is available for free or on donation to charities for Iran. So if you're interested in that, um, have a look at my Gumroad. And yeah, I'd be really excited if anyone starts stitching my designs. It's a whole new experience for me to put my own designs on paper so if you are keen to to have a go they're free and um, yeah I'd be really happy to see someone else bring my work to life so now we're gonna go for a bit of a wander and I'll show you where I've displayed the cross stitch in my house so this one is by Anna Lee Waite Designs and it's called uh, Autumn Leaves. Um, yeah, I really like this one. I happened to also find this matching fabric that ended up looking good behind it. Uh, this one's on 28 count cashel using some gentle arts threads, the called for threads. And I've put it here on one of my plant walls um yeah i just find cross stitch looks really good when put next to plants i don't know why but i've kind of been combining locations where i've got plants and um, adding cross stitch there so i've put this other piece up here but i'm not too sure if i'm going to keep it there just it's a bit too high to be seen or appreciated um unless you stand on the couch it's quite impractical but I'll I will show you so this is also by Stitchy Princess Black um, it's Baba it's called Baba Yaga's hut so Baba Yaga is this mythical witchy um, folklore person person witch creature maybe witch is the best term um, yeah this was really fun to stitch um, but again, probably not the best location being a centimeter from the, the roof skirting. Um, so I, I was going to bring it down and put it somewhere else, but just haven't got around to that yet. 
So this is another finished splayed finished object. This is by Chatelaine Designs and it's one of their small pieces called Fly Agaric. Um, yeah, and I really like this one. I learnt a lot of techniques in doing this. So I learnt, I hadn't beaded before, I learnt beading. These are, I think they're called Algerian crosses. She had a, a few specialty sp stitches in this. And it, this is one of the pieces where I happened to find the perfect frame for it, which is rare. But yeah, I really like its location here. Um, this is a mister, but it's not for my plants. It's for my giant burrowing cockroach. Um, you know what? How about I just show you my cockroach? Let's see if I can wake him up. So if you're not aware, you can actually keep giant cockroaches as pets. Um, they don't really look like the kind of cockroach you would see in your kitchen. They're kind of more like a giant beetle. So here's Cookie. Um, they don't really like to do much. They burrow and they're native to Queensland in Australia. And that's Cookie. Um, they hiss when they're disturbed, but it doesn't seem too disturbed today. They've got this yeah, I wanted to call it, I don't know if it's a he or, oh, it's a her actually. Well, I wanted to call her Gregor um, after Gregor from the Franz Kafka novel, Metamorphosis, but my daughter insisted on calling her Cookie and just kind of looked like a cookie, so fair enough. Um, yeah, and they've got these spiky legs. They're very curious creatures. So if I put something new into her house, she'll explore it with her antennae. I know some people are freaked out by bugs, but uh, as you can see, it's not a very cockroach-like cockroach. It's, oh, she's hissing. All right, I'll put it down. <laughs> see, I'm still not 100% comfortable with them. They do freak me out a bit, but there's another one, a smaller one I've got. That one may be hiding. So they eat gum leaves, eucalyptus leaves and other various leaves um, and they're pretty low maintenance. You just kind of leave them with the leaves and spray their house with water a few times a week. Um, yeah, that's Cookie. There's, there's also another cockroach in there called Crumb, but I won't bother too much. All right, here is another area that I've displayed some cross stitch. This one is an owl forest embroidery design and uh, it was part of a series with three different summer themed images. So this one was honey hive. Oh, I can't remember what it's called. Maybe it was hive. And it's just got bee related motifs. The two others were jam and tea and I would really love to get all three and display them together, but it's still extremely difficult to find any owl forest kits. Um, people are selling them for like insane prices now online because they are so hard to get. So I'm hoping they release these as PDFs. Uh, the rest of these I mean, but we'll see. This is another finish from this year. Um, so this was a witch from Laurel Witch. Uh, he's a cross stitch designer and she often makes these witches with various different themes. So I took the pattern for, for one of her witches and then I um, designed the rest. So it's a proverb, it's actually a Quaker proverb about spiders. Um, and I put in that little sun and moon because why not? Um, oh, while we're here, I'll show you this corn. Sorry, my dog had seen a small child and that always seems to trigger her for some reason. Um, yeah, this is some corn I grew a few years ago now, more than a few years, but it's um, mountain, I think it's called mountain corn is the breed and it's one of the heirloom species of corn that don't really exist anymore in supermarkets. Um, but I really liked how they looked. They, they just looked so surreal. 
So I spray painted them, dried them out, and um, yeah, they're now a decoration. They didn't taste great, I have to admit. Um, the heirloom species of corn are very mazy, very flowery, with not much sugar. But um, nice to look at anyway. Okay, so that was actually all my finishes. There were less than I was expecting. I think there was about 15, 14. Um, I had a lot more whips though. I think I had about 30, 35 whips. Uh, so they are all still in progress. So I think for 2023, there'll be more finishes. So I've got some whips that are almost there, but not quite. Um, yeah, so that was 2022. Now to end this, I did want to talk about this plant. So this is a, is a cultivar, hybrid, not hybrid. It's a cultivar of the common Monstera deliciosa. This is Thai constellation. So a few years ago, maybe four or five years, these variegated Monstera started coming out. There's this one and there's another one, Monstera um, albo, which has more patches of variegation. And these were exceedingly oof, rare and hard to find. And, and this particular one is um, copyrighted. I don't think that's the right word for a plant, but the, there was a lab that were making these in tissue culture and they found a way to um, reliably get this clone. So they've patented or copyrighted. Uh, there is a plant word for it, but they've, whatever, they've protected this style of plant and they only release a few a few hundred a year so they create this market supply and demand kind of like diamonds to to make these more rare than they are um yeah which is a bit ridiculous but it's the plant world the indoor plant world um so this one i bought when it was a baby so it was only tiny with a few leaves I think three years ago, three or four years ago for some ridiculous price. I think it was a hundred and hundred and something for that tiny plant. Um, and now it's grown and yeah, this is it. I have to say I'm a bit underwhelmed. Um, it doesn't have that much variegation, which is what people go mad for. And uh, yeah, some of the leaves are not looking great. To be fair, I haven't really been looking after it too much. Um, I really need to repot it. It's been in this tiny pot for ages. And uh, yeah, this is the Monstera Thai constellation. Um, I had been thinking, oh, I'll just wait for it to come down in price and then I'll buy one, but it still hasn't really come down in price. The, whoa, sorry. It's really closer to the plant than you needed. The place that makes them is still really limiting how much how many they release. Okay, so I might talk a bit about plans for 2023, things that I would like to get stitched this year. This is one of the Blackbird designs um, that was released some time ago, but uh, I still wanted to get this stitched. It's called Away We Ride, and it's sort of a Halloween theme. Although that kind of looks like a Christmas tree. Is it Christmas themed? Maybe not. I don't know. It could just be a plum tree or something. But I like ravens and crows and it's it's got that raven vibe. Yeah, so hopefully I can get a start on this soon. This is another blackbird design. So this one's called The Long and Winding Road. Um, and they release six patterns relating to the beetles. This is also an old one. I don't know when it's from, 2014. Um, yeah, I mean, I like the beetles. I'm not like a major fan, but I picked this more because the design's really cute. I've got the threads for this actually, but I just, mm, here they are. What's this? But I, but I haven't actually started it, so. This would be easy, an easy one to start soon. Um, these Just Nan patterns. So I went through a phase where I bought like five Just Nan mice and I haven't even made one. So I want to at least make one this year. And this is an, it's an autumn mouse scissor roll, which sounds practical. 
yeah and I like aut autumn Halloween designs I also bought a whole bunch of Mill Hill kits like this I've got this one Oops. Oh, it's something else I'll show you in a sec. Yeah, and this duck. I think things are. Oh, sorry, just didn't want to drop that. Yeah, I also had a sunshine thing. Oh, it's this. This one's cute. Yeah, so I bought these and I want to at least get started on one this month. I like this chicken one. And how cute is this little chicken button? Yeah, so that's in my plan list. This is also a Just Nan. Oh. Um, I've had my eye on this one for a while, but like a lot of Just Nans, they, they can be hard to find if they're old, and this is an older release. It's got a cat, beehives, so I'm sold. Oh, it's also got parrots. I didn't even see that. And it comes with this really cute, like, bird bath bead. Uh, so this is something... Oh, I, don't know, I, don't know. I was looking for this the other day. I don't know where it went. This is a scissor fob from the Primitive Hair. Um, yeah, I thought this was really cool. It, she released it at the 20... 22 Needlework Expo. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know how she made this. Must have baked some polymer. It's quite detailed. It's got this little spell book. Hmm. I'm always losing my scissors, so this will be useful. I might even use it as something to hang off my bag. Seems a waste to just have it as a scissor fob. Hmm. So I think that's it. Um, thanks so much for watching. Um, please comment below. I really like engaging with people in the cross stitch community. I think a, lot, a few people I've been chatting with um, and I find that cross stitch heads or cross stitch obsessed people tend to have a lot in common. Um, it's sort of like a niche area. Um, yeah, so if anything has sparked your interest, let me know. Um, and all the best for 2023. Bye.